Yeah, and just before we bring in uh, Mr Murray there, um, the committee is meeting with National Broadband Ireland uh, in the coming weeks, and we will be taking that specific issue up with them, as we've taken up with the department. We're aware of, of, the, of that issue, uh, and they're talking about a point-to-point -point wireless service from the mainland to the island. Uh, the committee is unanimous in its view uh, that that should be done by a fibre optic cable directly to the island, not by a point-to-point -point service. Uh, Mr uh, Murray. Yeah, just to come back on, I think most deputies have touched on it at the moment, um, it's in relation to, I suppose, the haphazard approach to, I suppose, the lack of island proofing, which is what we, a common theme from Cogol's perspective. And two of them have just been touched on there, uh, the 20% reduction in travel, which did not bizarrely translate to um, the services both sea and air to the islands. And also we we're talking about earlier the SEI retrofit grant, which didn't uh, take into account the costs associated, considering the pressure there is on construction in this country and how hard it is to, to get people to do anything in the first place. And this grant now is going to make that even harder. But I mean, you'd start with the obvious thing with contractors on the island because they're on the ground and they're local. Uh, you might have some chance of getting that work done by doing that. But to exclude them with the, the million euro cap and the lack of a top up to take into consideration the extra cost of islands. Well, I mean, there are two prime examples that have just been touched on in this, in this meeting today where um, island thinking is not being used and we need to be considered, I suppose, and it is the work of the Islands Division to, to, to make this part you know, of everything that's uh, happening through different grant systems and availability of any regulations in relation to island living to encompass the islands as a lot, you know, in the same with the leader programme. Uh, and, and if it's thought of in that context, uh, that, you know, does this work for the islands or is there a nuance here that needs to be adapted to make this work for the island? to have that thought process at the start rather than always having to come in at the end, which is what we're doing now yet again, to try and backtrack or backwalk what's just been done to make it adaptable in the island context. And it's frustrating for islanders. Um, we're looking at this document here, which came out uh, in 1996, which was the island's uh, development document done at the time. Um, and now we are, whatever it is, 26 years later, trying to do the next phase of that to update it, so to speak. I mean, that's a huge gap in itself. Um, but it has to be to the forefront uh, of the thought process where islands are dealt with in a lot capacity. And that, you know, like the SAI, like the 20% reduction, uh, why wasn't that automatically thought of, well, this is going to be a problem on the islands uh, if the contractors can't meet this threshold? You know, well, then we'll adapt it, like John mentioned, with the Department of Agriculture grants. It doesn't take a lot to do it. Uh, I think Deputy O'Keefe said it. You don't have to change all the regulations. You just need to do a little bit of tweaking with the regulations that are there to bring it into the context of island living. And that's across everything. That's across planning for housing. That's across the health situation. And that's across what Deputy Nathan himself knows, Chair, uh, in relation to communications and especially in relation to broadband. And I think if through the work of this committee um, and the interdepartmental committee, but that's driven home, you know, and that is one of the main legs of the stool that comes out of this whole conversation that islands are thought of in the process uh, um, and all the processes in relation to anything that's uh, required, then I think that's probably the best achievement that could come out of all of these conversations and that we don't go back to another 25 years of trying to just always remind people, you know, hello, there are islands off the coast, there are people living on them, and we'd like that to continue, because that's kind of where we are at the moment. You know, there's been a lot of work done, a lot of talk, a lot of, and then a big gap with nothing. And now we need to get back to getting work done across the islands in every capacity. But also uh, the powers that be, wherever it's government departments, county council, you know, SCI, it doesn't matter where it's coming from, but they would consider the islands in the context of, you know, whatever is coming forward at the time. So hopefully that we can drive that home and get that thought process going and get it to continue and that islands will be constantly thought of, you know, and not forgotten again. Thanks. 
Thanks uh, very much, uh, Mr. Morden. Uh, just, uh, Mr. Walsh, um, it, it would be useful if, after the meeting, you furnish that information uh, regarding the transport costs, uh, so that we can include that in the correspondence that will be drafted on foot of this meeting uh, in relation to the government decision. Can I just put a final question to you? And I don't expect to have an answer now in relation to it, but if Cordal could come back, uh, I, I would appreciate it. Uh, and that's in terms of the utilisation of infrastructure when it is put in place. Now, this is not unique to the islands, uh, but I think there was a golden opportunity to exploit this uh, on the islands, and, and I don't know whether that has happened. Uh, and that is my predecessor uh, as Minister, uh, Minister Pat Rabbit, uh, rolled out high-speed broadband network to every single post-primary school uh, in the country, including uh, on the islands. And I know, having spoken with some of the teachers on some of the islands, uh, and asking them, you know, has the range of subjects been increased as a result of that, allowing for remote teaching? I accept that you can't do it in terms of practical subjects, but it does provide an opportunity uh, for students on our second level, uh, in our second level schools on our islands, to have a broader range uh, of subjects. I have a particular problem. Uh, in the other part of Galway, in East Galway, where we have a lot of small second level schools as well, and it limits the range of subjects that students can have. So my question is, on the islands, have we seen, uh, with the introduction of high-speed broadband in the post-primary schools, an increase in the range of subjects being offered to pupils uh, at junior level cycle and at senior level cycle, uh, where they are being taught uh, remotely? Um, and maybe uh, you could come back to the committee uh, with an answer to that uh, in the not too distant future, because from my experience, on the mainland this hasn't happened, uh, and it really need to, needs to be driven by the Department of, Ag of Education, working with the uh, education authorities and the ETBs uh, to ensure that there is a broader spectrum of subjects offered uh, to students uh, in uh, the smaller uh, second level schools uh, across the country. So can I thank you, unless there's any final comment that you want to make, can I thank you for your contributions uh, today? Again, very constructive uh, and very positive engagement with the committee. Um, we will be uh, in private session after this meeting going through a number of the issues that you've raised and following those up and we will come back to you with the response that we receive. Uh, the committee has also invited the Minister Humphreys and our officials to a future meeting where we'll raise these very points again and concerns that uh, you've raised with us this morning. Furthermore, it is my intention as Cahirlach uh, for this committee to visit and hold a formal uh, meeting on one of our offshore uh, islands to meet with the uh, people on the ground on a number of the islands and get a feel firsthand for their concerns uh, before we prepare our final report uh, for Minister Humphreys. Uh, and we'll hope that this feeds into the Department's action plan uh, for island development when it is published, uh, hopefully uh, as soon as possible. So, Garaweel of Magot Galair, and thank you for, for your time uh, this morning. The Joint Committee will now proceed in private session and remain uh, until uh, it is uh, adjourned. Good morning.